Hello, everyone. My name is Timo Elliott, and I'm an innovation evangelist for SAP. The theme of this week's Better Together conversation is achieving real-time customer insights. And I'll be talking to Mustafa Mustafa, Senior Director of Analytics and Technical Shared Service for Ferrara Candy. Now, this series is where SAP gives the microphone to our customers and partners for an unfiltered look at how they're innovating with SAP's business technology platform to unlock business value. And through high quality products, superior innovation, and a portfolio of loved brands, Ferrara is the undisputed leader in the sweet spot of snacking and believes in sharing delight in every bite. Uh, today, our job is to try and share some of the most important lessons learned on Ferrara's journey with the SAP Business Technology Platform or the Delight in Every Bite, B-Y-T-E program. Um, and the goal is to help you, the audience, be more successful with your projects. So, Mustafa, welcome. Please, could you briefly introduce Ferrara and your role? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Mustafa Mustafa. I am currently the Senior Director of Technical and analytics shared services within Ferrara. I've been there since 2014. My first initiative was to tran digitally transform the BI organ uh, organization within Ferrara. And then from there on out, I've been doing that digital transformation across many different uh, functions within IT. So how, would, how would you describe where Ferrara was in terms of di digital innovation when you arrived at the company? What, you, what were you starting with? So I would say that they were in their infancy stage. So they knew that there was a dire need to be able to uh, manage their information. Uh, one of their seven strategic imperatives was to have reports and analytics built out. So that's what, literally the reason why I was hired. I came on board and, and that was the goal was to transform reports and analytics to be on the latest and greatest, providing the visibility to the organization, the information they needed to have at their fingertips. So this was already an initiative that the, the company was behind. Do you know what, what triggered that? What, was, what were the business drivers? Why had they identified this as a, a possible opportunity or something that they needed to do? Uh, so in 2012, uh, Farley and Sathers and Farrar Pan had merged. Uh, two years later, the information was in various locations without, throughout the organization. Folks were spending tremendous amounts of time building things in Access Database, in Excel, and what the analyst was focused on was more on IT-driven solutions on the client-side PC versus having an enterprise data warehouse that would be able to be versatile to meet people's needs and providing them with them, the information they needed at the right time in the right place uh, in, in a way, in a mechanism in which they can consume that information. So having it be the right tool as well. So they were their information silos and it was just getting too painful. It was too obvious that it was not optimal for the organization. So what were the, what were the next steps? Who, who drove that conversation? How did you work with different parts of the business unit? How did you, how did you get started, right? You saw that there was an issue. How did you uh, get people to buy into what you were proposing? Yeah, so step one is connect with each of the various department leaders and with the executive leadership team. Understand from the executive leadership perspective, what were their goals for the year? Remember, one of the seven was me in particular, right? Reports and analytics. But there were six others goals that they had identified. Understanding those goals, then meeting with each department owner and stating what information do you currently manage and how does the information you particularly manage relate to the goal of the, of the leadership team? I mapped it out based off of impact to the organization, each of those departments need, uh, reporting capabilities. So I had a good understanding of what the landscape looked like. Next, I needed then to identify the ability to implement and looking at the technology we had in house, there was a huge gap. And so part of the strategy was to one, of course, is people in process, which I had identified. But the second portion was understanding the technology and being able to come up with a 
robust enough tool to enable us to meet the needs of the goals of the organization and the leadership team. So, and it sounds like that phase also helped you build credibility, which is so important for making these projects successful. Is there anything that you see people doing wrong or any advice you can give to people to, to start those conversations with credibility? Yeah, so trust needs to be built and trust is typically built by dialogue, understanding someone's needs, and when you understand someone's needs, I used to say, ask for the world and let's build it together. So I wanted an unconstrained perspective of what their needs were because folks tend to have a preconceived notion that te of technology limitations that currently don't exist anymore. And so once they communicated, here's what we wish we could have. And then I went and got a technical la technology landscape that can support giving people the right information with the right tool, combining those two and with the robustness of the paradigm shift of how quickly it is to develop in our newest technology, which was HANA, coming from our pre-existing technology that we had in our landscape, we were able to deliver month after month results. Things that would take months to build were now taking us weeks to build. So we work with an execution in our governance to um, our execution within our operating model, which is we deliver once a month uh, reports meeting their needs. So we built a data foundation for each functional area within the organization. And then we built reports off of that data foundation month after month. They knew that we were co in collaboration with them uh, and meeting with them and breaking down silos working cross-functionally that results were happening by working with us. Not just results simplification of their job so that they can automate the IT portion of their job and enable them to focus on analyzing without noise to ability to make decisions. And then you see a transitional phase within the super user or the end user or the business owner to be able to make decisions without noise, no longer based off of gut feelings, but based off of data that was accurately helping them get to their goal for the organization. And presumably then you had uh, a good idea of their business at this point. So you, you had a business level conversation with them, understand their, their greater goals, and then were able to translate that uh, to technology. But I have to say, you make it sound easy. I'm sure in real life, it's not it wasn't quite as easy as that. What were the kind of hurdles that you faced as you tried to implement this plan? What went wrong and how did you overcome them? It was a, I think when I was hired, I think the biggest hurdle was I, digital transformation wasn't something that was truly understood in, in various capacities. And so the methodologies that I brought on board were really a, a method methodical approach to be able to unite the organization to leverage a tool managing change management uh, with the highest likelihood of success and so by doing so uh, the the challenges was to communicate to the or to the organization to the, the business owners to the executive leadership team this is what the vision is and and so it took some time uh, and the results were quite impressive in our proof of concept of data warehouses when we first brought on HANA, where we were actually taking a single process from six minutes down to seconds. That That's hard for people to digest. You know, you get information real time, real fast. And that's a, for that perspective, it's a chance. They just couldn't comprehend what we were doing. So the moment they got it and it was available at their fingertips, the trust increased, the hurdles were removed, and the executive sponsorship was really what enabled us to roll this out fully throughout the organization within a two-year span, a full data warehouse from grassroots all the way to a mature solution. And, and it was the enablement of having that trust by the executives who in, wanted to have that information at their fingertips, but also alleviate their, their teams of having to do isolated techno technological solutions within their own teams. Now, one of the things that I find organizations struggle with is that technology can do things faster, but of course, turning speed into 
real business benefit is something that can be hard because it often it involves being able to do new things in new ways requires a certain amount of imagination it requires a lot of business change um it, it requires a leap of faith as well sometimes to get the business value out how, how did you manage that process of really making sure that people got the benefit out of faster technology Right. So I think, again, three-step process. First, I met with all the business owners. That's step one. Step two, I determined what's the easiest solutions to implement that low-hanging fruit, things that were high on the impact of the organization, but also low in the level of effort to develop. So then the third is then create a roadmap. And in the roadmap, I didn't roll out every single capability. That wouldn't make sense. It's too much for change management. What I did was taking the lowest hanging fruit, who was suffering the most, matching it with who I can really solve and, and bring value to that value to that group, combine those and said, you're the first person I'm gonna work with. In our situation, it was sales and demand planning. Bringing the, those teams together, collaborating with them, we came up with a solution, uh, a unified dictionary for the whole company, one report catalog for the whole company, they were collaborating in, in, in ways that they never collaborated before because they just never sit, had time to sit together. They're always working in isolation. By doing that, we built a data foundation that had everything that all the information they wanted. Now it was just nuances of how to extract information into different reports. And so we provided one tool, which was analysis for office from Bob J. So that gave people the ability to slice and dice. Then they're like, oh, I love this data. I wish I could just have this data come to me in the morning so I don't have to refresh. Okay, well, then we set up web intelligence and we allowed them to hit refresh. And now the report, I mean, um, we allowed them to get broadcast the reports to their inbox and now they're, it's available. Then as the maturity of that group went on, they're like, well, we want to start capturing our KPIs from, again, you may have heard the terminology from executive to shop floor. We want to remove the noise. We want to be able to, to, to really get to uh, the information so that we can make quick decisions and then we created dashboards for them. So what you see is you don't provide necessarily everything all up at once. What you do it is you do it incrementally so that change management is more digestible. And if it's more digestible, it has a higher likelihood of being accepted and adopted within the organization. And, and a steady stream of customer wins and people appreciating right. what you're able to give them. So you're building on that initial trust with with rewards and extra business capability. Now, just to make sure that we we know what we're talking about, could you describe the the technical stack for like what are the elements of the business technology platform that you're using? How are they connected together? So we currently have Hana as our data warehouse. So the Hana uh, server is has three components. The first is the data warehouse, right? So it's just like the database portion, and that's where all the data is stored. Second is the modeling portion. And then the third is we actually do utilize the front end application portion. So we can actually create web uh, applications from the HANA instance and be able to write report and write back to the database. Uh, this is important as some, at times we need to be able to uh, add comments to our, our, our reports and our information and HANA does a great job of allowing us to do so. Then the second is, the, which is a little bit more robust is our front end tools. So we have business objects, which is our front end tool. We have for uh, uh, analysis for office, which is our slicing and dicing Excel tool. We have web intelligence, which is our portal. So folks can go out to the portal, be able to see information not within our internal network. And we also have the ability to broadcast reports out, have formatted reports. And then the third is we have Lumira, which allows us to capture our uh, KPIs and, and allow our leadership team down to the shop floor be able to uh, digest the information, uh, remove the noise, and allow them to reach the goals of the organization that has been defined. We also, through acquisition, folks come, came on board with Tableau. And so we had a challenge of both Tableau and uh, our Bob J solution. And, of course, with me, I like to have a strong governance. I like to keep it sweet and simple, sweet value to the business, simple, the le least amount of jumps, the least complex it is, the higher the rate of uh, adaptability will be. So I brought on a technology called Analytics Hub. And what Analytics Hub does is it allows you to take Tableau reports, all the Bob J suite, unify them into one portal. 
And so when you go to your catalog, you can see, oh, I need this report. You don't have to think, oh, which tool do I go to? No, you just go to the hub and the hub will actually have it organized, uh, aligned with the catalog. So you just pick that report and then it opens up the right tool for you. Great. Um, now we're starting to run out of time. So let's have some sort of quick round of uh, questions. And some of these work actually came out of uh, the crowdsourced ones that we asked people in advance. So uh, adoption, how did you uh, encourage adoption as much as possible? Any, any barriers that you had to overcome? Yes. So with adoption, the first thing we had to do is we needed to uh, have uh, what I call part of my operating model is there's a portion of it called culture. And so culture is IT leading the initiative to work cross-functionally with a variety of, of analysts and business owners to work as one team across the organization. So we meet four times a month to navigate and be able to collaborate. Uh, and understand each other's priorities and how we cl uh, how we work off of each other. That being said, when we started working together, there was so much overlap between different departments that they all said, oh, I can benefit from your report, you can benefit from my report. And then there was a, uh, a real strong push where people were like, wow, I'm not doing IT work anymore. And I was hired as an analyst. And guess what? I'm going to start analyzing. And so what we saw from the original group and moving forward, most of our analysts became managers, directors, and VPs in the past six years. It's insane. It's because we, in essence, enabled them to really provide insight. And when someone provides insight, they're more valued than someone that's hitting, you know, a macro on their Excel spreadsheet. So when you are seeing success within your own career, when you're being alleviated from the things that are, are repetitive and they bring no value, uh, and, and we automate that, you're going to see a huge adoption and in, in kind of a trend. Now, one challenge would be uh, is, let's say some folks just love to be IT. Well, guess what? Let's convert them to IT resources. So we actually brought folks from the business who just didn't want to analyze and brought them into IT, and they became part of the team and were able to learn HANA uh, very easily because HANA with a SQL capability uh, is uh, for someone who's technical and works in Access Database or Excel, it's something easy for them to uh, be able to catch on quickly. That's a fantastic example. It sounds like it was a great learning experience for everybody. Um, and just what a great thing to have a project that, where you're turning analysts into executives. I think that's a, a great way of measuring the business outcomes. Did you actually do a formal ROI at all after this, out of interest? Yeah, so we did a formal ROI initially. And it was only for like one functional area, which is sales. The proposition to do this whole solution for just one functional area was worth it for us to, to, to spend the money for just one functional area. Now the entire company is on it, right? So that just shows that uh, I, we haven't gone back, but I think the true indicator of the success of it is, you know, when we look at disaster recovery and how critical is each tool in our environment, because I am enterprise architect, so I have to monitor uh, that type of uh, metric. Business intelligence was not a critical application in the past. Now it's the lifeline of the organization cross-functionally. You know, it, it, is, it's, it is the enabler for, for our, our organization to be able to make good decisions rather than gut decisions. It's an enabler to work smart and not hard. And I think that has been a huge paradigm shift in the organization that uh, has proven out, uh, even with its limited uh, evaluation for ROI that we did back in 2014. That sounds like a fantastic summary, but um, let me give you one last chance. What's one quick bit of advice that you would give to other organizations who want to become, you know, Ferrara fast? The, truly, you need to be able to recognize it's not just technology, it's people process technology. It's understanding the organizational goals, identifying what the current gaps are, then figuring out what are the latest and greatest technologies to be able to close that gap, partner with an organization that understands how to do that the easiest, low, lowest path of resistance, get it executed in a proof of concept model, get an appetite, let people taste the sweetness, right? Candy company, sweets company, you got to appreciate the sweetness of it, and then deliver it 
And then the results should either allow that to be productionalized if it's successful, or you cut it loose if it doesn't meet your needs. And so that's the process of having a good digital transformation from my perspective. And then you hit the reset button over and over again to make sure that you're able to execute effectively. Well, Mustafa, that was a really inspiring, uh, truly a delight in every bite. Um, but we've run out of time, so we'll have to end it there. Thank you so much for joining me. I found that fascinating, and I wish you all the success in the world for your projects going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, if you'd like to hear more great examples of business technology platform success stories, or you'd like to suggest topics that you'd like to see us discuss with other people, if you'd like to participate in the series yourself, please go to sap.com slash BTP to be part of the conversation. So uh, thank you for your attention. Best of luck with your projects in the audience. And I hope to see you again soon for another Better Together conversation. Goodbye, everyone, and please stay safe. <laughs>